If I can get you to understand auto layout in the next five minutes, you will save 15,000 hours of work this year and make an extra $7.3 million that you can use to quit your job, buy a private island, and then fly there on your private jet. You get it, the next five minutes can change your life. So let's go. Auto layout, as its name suggests, makes the work of laying out elements in your designs automatic. Before auto layout, if you had a list of objects like this playlist or these websites here, if you wanted to switch things around, you would have to go in manually and drag them like this. With auto layout, you can just change the order of the elements and boom, perfectly laid out. Before auto layout, if you wanted to change the spacing between elements, you would have to go to each one of them and change the spacing. Now with auto layout, you guessed it, it's automatic. The truth is Figma did not invent this concept. If you look at the development world, you'll find a CSS property called the Flexbox. And that is exactly what auto layout is. Auto layout and Flexbox are exactly the same, which is important because the things you design will ultimately be developed. So it's nice to design it the way it's gonna be developed in the end. So it's best to design with the same tools you'll be developing. The way auto layout and Flexbox work is that you group together or wrap together items and then you add the auto layout to them. Now, here's a quick example of how I would build this playlist here with auto layout. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to identify groups of content and then we add auto layouts to these groups. So by just looking at this playlist item here, I can see that we have this vertically stacked text that seems to be a group. All of these items seem to be in a group by themselves. This is not in a group, this is not in a group, and these two here also seems to be in a group. So let's go back to the text here, add an auto layout, shift A, then add an auto layout to all of these things, shift A, not auto layout, not auto layout, and these things would also be an auto layout since they're grouped. Okay, that's the first step. We have the individual items inside of auto layouts. Cool. What is the next step? Well, it is to group everything into an auto layout row. What we do then is we just grab all of these items and we hit Shift A again. And there we have an auto layout row. I'll change the background color with the color picker. I'll go to the auto layout settings here, change the horizontal padding, 24 pixels, Vertical padding, 16 pixels, change the name to row, and there we have our first row item, okay? So I'll grab this row item and I'll go over to number three, which is about grouping rows into a responsive auto layout table. And responsive is important here because now if I decrease the size of this, it's not a responsive. And that's because Currently, everything is being spaced based on pixels. We need to go to our advanced layout settings, change the spacing mode from packed to space between so that it's automatically spaced. So I hit that and now if I change the size, you can see that it's responsive. So I grab this item, I duplicate it. I'll target them both, add an auto layout here I'll change the spacing to just one pixel between them. I'll call it table, but we still have a problem. If I change the size of this, you can see that they're not adhering to the size of the table. So I have to go into these items and change their width from fixed to fill container. And this you have to do for all things within auto layouts if you want it to span the whole width. So. Now, if I change the spacing of the table container, these two here fill the container and thus are responsive. Just like that, a table with auto layouts, magic. Now, do you have a specific Figma topic you would love to learn more about? Let us know in the comments below. Until the next one though, have a great life. We'll talk soon, ciao.